still charging? Goodness gracious. So, uh, welcome back to the vlog, first of all. Welcome back to my Tesla. Second of all, third of all, the Tesla next to me, you can see the uh, big, like, red sentry mode pop up on the center console because I got close to it. So, he obviously has sentry mode. I do not have sentry mode. Uh, a little unfortunate, but you know what? It is what it is. So, anyways, uh, another Tesla Talk Tuesday. 210 miles of range. So, I didn't get back until 11.30, 12 o'clock last night. So my car had been plugged in for just over seven hours. Um, that's how low my battery was, just saying. But anyways, we are up there, we got plenty of range, and uh, let's get out of this garage. them you gotta be careful guys keep it under uh whatever the speed limit is all right guys you just, you just gotta slow and steady when there's a race right all right guys so some very interesting news this week but uh before i get to it just want to say really really appreciate everybody who's taking the time to like subscribe comment whatever it is uh thanks for checking out the channel um sorry if i drone on a lot that's kind of how tesla talk tuesday is it's a lot of news trying to put some visuals up, switch it up a little bit. But anyways, let's just get to it. So to kick things off this week, uh, there were two videos posted uh, online about Model 3s like swerving around cars to avoid crashes. One, the Model 3 was actually rear-ended and then was able to swerve around the car in front of it uh, to not cause a second crash. Um, and then, well, the other one was actually just an avoidance of a truck swerving into the Model 3 lane and then the Model 3 uh, swerving out of the way in order to not hit that truck. So either way, um, very cool videos if that's the case. I think some people are trying to confirm one of them. Um, the drivers have commented on both and said it happened so quickly, but the Model 3 definitely reacted faster than I could have, and then I think they may have taken over control of the car, so I, I just wanna know sort of at what point did the drivers take control of the car? How much did autopilot do in preventing those crashes? But either way, pretty cool stuff. Obviously not like the videos of almost being in an accident, but that autopilot can potentially really help save you from getting into any accidents or crashes. So I'll post the links to those videos. I'll try to find them um, in the comments, or not in the comments, in the uh, description. So check those out if you wanna see them. And speaking of autopilot, um, autopilot prices have gone up from 5,000 to $6,000. Um, this is how I guess Tesla is saying that Tesla's are going to be appreciating assets. The price of autopilot over time is going to be significantly increased, is are, are his words. I will be curious to know what those increases look like going forward, how much they'll be, how often they'll be, and how much autopilot will ever get to or get to at some point. But what is interesting, earlier this year uh, when they dropped prices on I think all like Model S, Model X's, and on autopilot, uh, autopilot, even with this $1,000 price increase, is still cheaper than autopilot was at the beginning of this year. I think autopilot was closer to like $8,000 at the beginning of this year, something like that, maybe $7,000. Um, either way, more than the 6 k it is right now. My advice, if you have a Tesla and you can get autopilot, get autopilot while you can because uh, it is pretty cheap right now and it's definitely a great deal if they're gonna come out with full self-driving soon. And speaking of Model 3s, uh, Model 3 leasing has just changed a little bit. So prior, oh, I don't know when this change went into effect, I think sometime semi-recently, but prior to the way the leasing is now, it was 3,000 down and then $504 a month. With that kind of a pricing structure, I think the total cost came out to $22,000-ish a year. Now the new leasing structure that Tesla just laid out is 4,500 down and $299 a month? Yeah, around $300 a month. Um, so with this new pricing structure, the total amount that you end up paying is like $18,882, somewhere in that ballpark. I don't know if that's the exact math, but either way, 
Um, it's a 36 month lease. You get 10,000 miles a year, but uh, you get savings of like uh, a little over $3,000 or something. It's a three year lease, uh, 10,000 miles a year. It's a standard range plus that this is uh, the lease structure for. Um, what else is there? Oh, and remember the key is there's no buyout option at the end of this lease. So for all leases going forward, at least for Model 3s as far as I'm aware, uh, there is no buyout option. And the reason for there's no buyout is because Tesla has officially rolled out their uh, robo taxi plan going forward. And all Model 3s that are leased... Red light camera reported ahead. Thank you, Waze. All Model 3s that are currently being leased, um, because there is no buyout option, they will go back to Tesla at the end of those three years and effectively be used for that robo taxi fleet uh, in order to basically act as like an Uber that Tesla owns and operates and there's no drivers involved, it's all autonomous. That's not good guys. We got another uh, car need service, car may not restart. Uh, no bueno, no bueno. Up, oh, it went away. Thank goodness. But I think I can see why Tesla decided to uh, change up the Model 3 leasing structure. Uh, so the biggest reason is obviously instead of a $3,000 cash down payment, it's, it's a lot more, um, especially for the average person. It's an extra $1,500, um, which, which is significant, but also insignificant, right? It's a 50% increase over what it was. Um, but your overall cost of the lease is, is down by about $3,000, I believe, if I did the numbers correctly earlier. Either way, um, there is an overall cost savings um, on the total lease if you add up 36 monthly payments of 504 versus 36 monthly payments of maybe it's 399 um, and then also the initial cash of either $3,000 down with a $500 a month payment or now it's uh, $4,500 down. So it's more cash down but cheaper overall to the consumer um, over the whole length of the lease but it gives Tesla more cash up front. So for each person that is leasing uh, Tesla is obviously getting an extra $1,500 and that's obviously good for them right now seeing as how they're burning through a lot of cash and need that cash to grow and to operate. So I understand why they're doing this. Um, so although that although they're asking for more money in the long run, it is better for the consumer in my eyes. Uh, but yes, you do have to plunk down a little bit a larger chunk of change in order to get into that lease. Now, speaking of my car potentially needing service because that warning light keeps popping up and it's very annoying and also uh, quite nerve wracking. Um, I hope nothing major happens, but if it does, I hope it happens within the uh, warranty period. Um, but speaking of which, um, Tesla is supposedly, I don't know if they can yet or if this is a future feature or what, but I saw an image online, I read a little article about it, I'll have to recheck. But either way, um, Tesla is supposedly will or can already uh, self-diagnose themselves. Um, so what will happen is you'll get a little like message on your screen, some sort of fault or I don't know. Basically, something's wrong with your car, it needs service, the part has been pre-ordered, please go to your preferred service center, um, uh, call them, go in your app, whatever, schedule a service appointment. Um, and what this is essentially doing is getting the part there faster, less wait time for you. Your car is able to pre-diagnose itself so you don't have to like get a problem, don't know like how bad it is or what might need to be fixed and then take it to Tesla and then them say, oh, we gotta order these parts and these parts and then it takes even longer to get your car fixed. The point of this is that if your car can self-diagnose, it pre-orders the part, you schedule a service appointment. By the time you get to that service appointment in a day or two, you hope that the parts there are close to being there. Or you can schedule the appointment obviously after the part arrives. Um, and, and this is to help with the process. I know a lot of people have complained about Tesla service centers. I assume they're probably very overwhelmed and uh, well, I think that this is a very cool thing. The car is being able to self-diagnose and then pre-order the necessary part in order to get fixed. But yes, as you guys can see, I'm pulling into my building real quick. Be right back. Oh, guys, we got the Tesla Trifecta X, S, and then an older S, which I will park right there. All right, we got the three Teslas lined up. We're ready for work because everybody can obviously see these gorgeous cars when they come down the ramp. It's perfect. It's the perfect setup. It's finally off work, but I just want to say thank you guys so much. Uh, we are 
almost a third of the way to a thousand subscribers. I know not much, but also a lot at the very same time. So 333 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. If you guys are enjoying the videos, please, please consider liking and subscribing. But if not, just feel free to click away. It's YouTube. That's the that's the the glory of YouTube. Just click off a video if it's terrible. So if this video is awful. I would say click on another one of my videos because maybe it's better. I don't know. I don't. It probably it might not be, but you know, it's YouTube, right? day job is beautiful days like this because you're just inside an office all day and it's it's absolutely gorgeous out here it's like i think it's almost 80 degrees maybe over 80 degrees luckily we got some soccer tonight so we're getting outside we're gonna have some fun but until then got a nice drive home in traffic all right ladies and gentlemen so back to tesla talk tuesday we've kind of covered most of the tesla related material so we're actually on to more like electric stuff so electrify america that all came about because of the whole Dieselgate scandal with Volkswagen, that whole group. Um, basically, they were forced to uh, spend X amount on promoting like electric infrastructure across America. So, Electrify America. They're coming out with an app supposedly released by the end of May. Um, so, there's going to be two different memberships. The Electrify America Pass and the Electrify America Pass Plus. Um, so, I don't know if there's a cost to just like the base pass um, but the pass plus will be four dollars a month and what this gets you is discounted charging rates if you don't have a charger at your house or office building or somewhere where you can like charge for free um, or not necessarily for free but even at your house right like your own charger um, and you're charging a lot you're doing a lot of road trips then the electrify america pass plus might be worth it you pay four dollars a month but you get discounted charging rates also what they're going to do is they're going to have different like charging levels so it'll be from like zero to 75 kilowatts will obviously be the cheapest rate because it's a slower rate and they charge per minute that you're plugged in not per like miles or charge rate that you're getting which is interesting because if you're getting like 10 kilowatts you're still getting charged x amount per minute so you really want to be getting the top of whatever range you're charging in because if you're getting the bottom of the range like say you're charging at 76 kilowatts you're kind of getting ripped off but it's still most likely cheaper than gas. I'm sure it's still a lot cheaper than gas. Um, it's like zero to 75, uh, like 75 to 125, and then anything over 125 kilowatts, something like that is probably gonna be the, uh, the ranges that they break it up in. Um, and then you also have companies like Audi, Porsche, and Lucid. And um, well, those companies have pre-arranged sort of agreements with with electrify america and electrify america is part of like porsche audi like that whole group basically if you buy one of these cars that already has an agreement in place the agreements are for certain charging rates the incentive there is that if you buy for example a uh, mission e or the Taycan, which is the porsche all-electric car um if porsche has already arranged for like free charging or very cheap charging you have an incentive to buy that car because, well, it's cheaper to charge. Kind of like when Teslas first came out, free unlimited supercharging. If you buy a used Tesla, free unlimited supercharging. My car, free unlimited supercharging, and I didn't buy it new. So that was an incentive to buy Tesla. You can use their charging network for free. Um, these car companies have certain agreements uh, set up in order to help promote charging and they offer discounted charging rates, maybe free, I don't really know, but the point is anything that's in place will remain in place. So definitely an interesting uh, thing coming out. I'll be curious to see how these memberships work, what the costs are, how that compares to Tesla superchargers. Um, the interesting thing about Tesla is I'm pretty sure they charge by the amount of miles that you put on, not per minute, which is a lot better and more efficient in my mind. Um, because that means if you get a good rate or a bad rate, it just means that you're going to either charge faster or slower, but you just charge based on how many miles you end up putting on your car. All right, I think I'm just going to cut it off here because I don't want to ramble too much. Also, don't want to bore you guys, but I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, anyways, it is beautiful outside. I'm going to try to get outside and hopefully you guys can get outside, but um until next time guys next week next test talk tuesday or in the meantime probably another vlog maybe cars and coffee this uh this weekend we'll see
But uh, anyways, that's going to be it for today. So thanks for watching.